Welcome to the Tax Sale Podcast, where tax sale investing is made easy. My name is Casey Denman. I'm a tax sale veteran. I'm the leading tax sale expert. I'm the author of the Tax Sale Playbook, founder of the Tax Sale Academy, and I'm your host right here on the Tax Sale Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me on today's podcast episode. As always, this episode is completely free and it's brought to you through because of the Tax Sale Academy, which you can learn more about by visiting taxcellacademy.com. And if you enjoyed these podcast episodes, make sure you subscribe to us on your favorite podcasting or video platform. And you can find us over at taxcellpodcast.com to do just that. All right. Today, I want to discuss the single most important topic as a tax sell investor. It's a topic that I've devoted much of this podcast to, much of the tax sell playbook to, much of the tax sell academy to, and honestly, much of my life to. That is tax cell research. Research is the single biggest factor that determines whether you're going to succeed or not. The first time that most people look at a tax cell list, they're a little bit shocked. You know, you typically get the parcel number, the legal description, and an opening bid amount. That's it. Anything else that they provide happens to just be 100% extra, more of a convenience than anything else, but it is not guaranteed at all. Things like the address, size, value, condition, and every single other variable for that property is up to you to figure out on your own. You know, it's kind of like the equivalent of car shopping. And somebody says, I have a car for sale. Do you want to buy it or not? Make, model, year, mileage, location, whether it even has an engine inside it or not, yeah. That stuff is up to you and you alone to figure out. Tax sell investing is a buyer beware business where you assume the worst and then you begin to either verify or disprove that assumption. It's kind of scary to somebody who is not skilled in their research, which is why I stress the importance of it so much. The issue is that many new investors approach tax sell research as if it's a science of sorts. And what I mean by that is where it's objective and it's guided solely by the data. Sure, we invest based on numbers, but we also invest based on countless other factors that impact the reality of obtaining those numbers. And that information can be subjective at times. If it was as simple as saying this property is worth $10,000 and I need to buy it for $8,000 and that was all there is to this business, it'd be a very very easy and probably competitive business. But there's far more to it than that. Every single property on the face of the earth is different. While we might have comps, even if you have two of the exact same properties side by side, somebody is going to prefer one of those properties over the other one because of one reason or another. Everything is different. So we must approach research different on a per property basis. Let me discuss two very important pieces of advice when it comes to approaching your tax sale research correctly. If you follow both of these, you will never ever lose. It's as simple as that. And this will make sense as we get into it. The first one, if you know everything possible about what you are buying, you cannot lose money. Let me say that another way. If you want to invest with absolutely zero risk, then it is your responsibility to know everything possible about what you are investing in. Imagine this crazy scenario for one second. You have the option to make one investment. That's it. If you make money, then you can make another investment. But if you lose money on that very first investment, you can never ever invest again. Or worse yet, you lose all of your money and every single asset that you own. Suddenly, your approach will shift from just buying something you think might work to only buying something you know will work. If you could spend a solid year researching one property and you have to make it a winning investment, what would you do differently? Perhaps dig a little bit deeper? Perhaps actually go down to the county, maybe talk to the neighbors, drive by the property a hundred times, dig up the history of the property back to the 1900s. I don't know, everybody is different, but the point is, that the more you know about a property, the lower your risk is going to be. 
Of course, for most people, myself included, it is not possible to know absolutely everything about every single property that we place a bid on to have a chance of winning. But that should be the metric that we measure by. The closer we are to knowing everything possible about a property, the better off it'll turn out as an investment. Always keep that in mind. You know, I get emails and messages daily from people who have come across my trainings after they made a poor tax sale investment. And when I probe deeper, every single time it becomes obvious that they missed something before they made their investment. In other words, their research, if they did it at all, was lacking. And most of the time, within a matter of a minute or two, I will have found exactly what they had missed. If you want to never lose, then know everything possible about the property you are investing in. It's that simple. Secondly, I want you to understand that research requires a very holistic approach. Everybody enjoys checklists. And yes, I use checklists myself. I have forms in the academy that assist with research as well, including checklists. But the problem is that a checklist does not always work the way you want it to in every single area. Obviously, a checklist certainly helps. But tax sale investing takes a holistic approach and educating yourself about the process and the area is the only way you will see success. You know, there's a saying that holds true for so much of life. You don't know what you don't know. In other words, there are things you likely don't know to even look for. Let me give you an example. You know, I can make a checklist that says something like check local ordinances. That way, you know exactly what you're required to do once you buy a property in that area. Maybe you have to register the sale of that property. Maybe you have to clean up the property. Maybe you have to keep the weeds down, make required repairs, clear the sidewalks of snow, whatever it is, check the local ordinances is on your checklist. In fact, it's on my checklist. First off, the sad reality is that most people would just ignore that entirely. They won't check the ordinances at all. Secondly, this is more than just reading one page of ordinances that you happen to stumble across online. The correct approach is to visit the county office, sit down perhaps with a representative, explaining to them you're new as an investor in the area and you wanna know exactly what your responsibilities are. Perhaps even get a detailed list of every single ordinance and expectation that might apply to you. Is it overkill? Yeah, it's perhaps overkill, but it goes back to the first step of do you actually know everything possible about the property. That includes responsibilities after your purchase. And I can tell you from experience, I've received countless ordinance violations, citations, tickets, fines, whatever you want to call them over the years for things that could have easily been avoided with a much wiser effort. Or it could be something like value property that's on your checklist, which is relatively easy once you know how to do it. But what if you value a property at $50,000? And then you realize you don't know anything about the local area. You've never read the newspaper. You've never checked on the economy. And a lot of people haven't even been to an area that they invest in, which is a horrible idea. But let's say that you stumble across an article that says, hey, there's 5,000 people per day that are leaving the city, a negative population growth of 5,000 people a day. Obviously, that's a massive exaggeration. But that would mean that your $50,000 property that you purchase might only be worth thirty or $20,000 by the time you clear the title and finally get it on the market. And you might never find a buyer since nobody's moving there. Or perhaps it's the inverse of that. And you failed to notice the news article that Amazon is building a massive distribution center just one mile away from the commercial land that you just picked up at a tax sale. But you don't know this. So you decide to do a two-week quick flip. You resell it quick claim deed as is title, and you make 20% on your money. Sounds good, right? Until you realize, and if you had just held it a year, you could have made like 200%. So even though you accomplish checking the box of value property, that likely does not tell the entire story. It is so crucial to take into consideration all the factors, the tax sale laws, the county requirements, the local economy, the local news and changes, market, and industry trends with supply and demand and subsequently valuation trends before you even get into the property itself. And then 
You'll take care of all your property related research, determine it, how it is impacted by everything else, and make the proper investment decision based off of your objectives alone. Now I share all this with you to remind you that tax cell research, it can be hard. Yes, there are processes, there are paths, there are checklists, there are strategies to ensure you don't make mistakes, but it is up to you to put in the work. It is up to you to do more than just look at a photo that you found online. It's up to you to do more than just look at the property assessor's report. It is up to you to put forth the effort to ensure that the metric that your research is based off of is knowing everything possible about the property while pursuing your knowledge with a holistic approach that takes all things into consideration. Now this is a work in progress when you're learning it, absolutely. But keep this approach in the back of your mind and you're going to remove the mistakes while increasing profits in the meantime. I truly hope this has helped you out. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the Tax Cell Podcast. If this episode or any of the episodes here on the podcast have helped you out, please do me a huge favor and leave a positive review on whatever podcasting or video platform you're listening to us on right now. This podcast is free. I don't charge a listing or membership fee or anything like that, but your reviews really do help us out and might even serve to pay it forward to somebody else who learns about this incredible business simply because you took the time to tap that five-star review or leave a positive feedback comment. And as always, if we can be of any additional help, make sure you check out our website at taxcellacademy.com. Hey, take care and make it a successful day. We'll see you next time right here on the Tax Cell Podcast. Bye-bye.